In this presentation, we're going to look at a reaction between a strong and a strong base. And we're going to use a, a titration to uh, demonstrate this. Basically, in a, in a titration, you have either an acid or base in an instrument called a burette. And you're going to slowly add or titrate the acid or base into a, a solution containing either an acid or base in a flask like this. Um, in the problems we're going to be working, we're going to be calculating the uh, the pH in our solution after we've titrated or added in either uh, an acid or base to that. Um, for a strong acid-base titration, uh, of course, you have a reaction between in this case, uh, in this example, we use nitric acid, which is a strong acid. We're going to react that with a strong base, potassium hydroxide. Uh, in this case, you would get water and some salt, potassium nitrate. Now, this salt is soluble, and so therefore, it, it actually doesn't form. It remains as in its ionic form. So for a strong acid, strong base, it's sometimes easier, a little neater, to write the uh, the reaction as just the net ionic equation. You can write that as either H plus, representing the acid, plus OH minus, yields water, or maybe a little more correctly, uh, hydronium plus hydroxide uh, yields two waters. And of course, this would represent, the hydronium would represent our acid, the hydroxide would represent the base. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at an example of an uh, acid-base titration, a strong acid, strong base titration. Uh, in this example, uh, let's say that we had 20 milliliters of potassium hydroxide and the concentration of the potassium hydroxide is 0 0.200 molar. And so that would be what would be in our flask. And we're going to titrate that with or add uh, different volumes of 0.3 molar nitric acid. So here, if we go back to here, pretend that we had 20 milliliters, and this would represent our, uh, in the flask, this would represent our base, and we're titrating that with our acid, which we would have in the burette. <clears throat> so pretend that this is our titration that we're going to be doing. This would represent the nitric acid in the burette, and this would represent our strong base, the potassium hydroxide, in our flask. Now, think about what's going on at the molecular level. Uh, as we titrate or add our acid, so let's say that we're titrating, moving some acid down here. So as we add the acid to the base, every time we add one mole of acid, we're going to neutralize one mole of base. In other words, 1H plus will react with 1OH minus. So for every H plus that we add, we're going to neutralize 1OH minus to represent we should form water. So sometimes an acid-base reaction is called called a neutralization reaction. So for every one mole of acid that we titrate in, we're going to neutralize one mole of OH minus, or one mole of base. <clears throat> Eventually, we'll have added enough acid, enough moles of acid, to neutralize all of our base, or all of our OH minus. So let me just add these down here. Okay. So there's a name for this, the point at which you have added exactly enough acid to neutralize all of this. That's called the equivalence point. So at this point in our titration, we've titrated in or added enough OH minus excuse me, added enough H plus that all of our OH minus has been neutralized. So I'm going to replace those with water. 
Okay. So at this point, this would be what we would call the equivalence point. We've titrated in enough H plus or H3O plus to neutralize all of our OH minus. Now we can keep titrating, we can keep adding H plus to this solution. And at this point, there's nothing really to neutralize the H plus, so our pH should start going down at this point. Okay. So in this example, like I mentioned, we, we're going to pretend that we have uh, 20 milliliters of 0.2 molar OH minus, and we're going to add different volumes of our nitric acid, which is 0.3 molar. Uh, in this example, we're going to calculate the pH at different points in this titration. We're going to calculate the pH before any nitric acid is added. We're going to calculate the pH after we've added 10 milliliters of nitric acid. We're going to calculate the pH at the equivalence point, and then we're going to calculate the pH after the addition of 40 milliliters of nitric acid. So we'll go through these one at a time and kind of show you how we would do those calculations. Okay. So the first one, let's calculate the pH of our solution before we've added or titrated any strong acid in. So before we've added any acid, we only have essentially OH minus, our potassium hydroxide, we only have OH minus in aqueous solution. So we need to calculate the concentration of OH minus and then convert that to a pH. Okay. Now remember, our initial concentration of potassium hydroxide is 0.2 molar. And so since this is a strong base, the concentration of hydroxide would also be 0.2 molar. So we could easily calculate the concentration of H3O plus by dividing Kw by the concentration of OH minus. We get 5 times 10 to the minus 14. And then we can take the negative log of this <clears throat> to get the pH. So our pH would be 13.30. And that makes sense because this is a base, a strong base in solution. So we would expect our pH to be fairly basic. Okay. So that's how we would calculate the pH before we added any of our strong acid. Now second, the second uh, calculation we'd like to do is calculate the pH of our solution after we titrate in 10 milliliters of nitric acid. So remember, as we add our nitric acid, it's going to react with our hydroxide, and we're going to produce water. So it's a neutralization reaction. For every mole of hydronium or nitric acid that we add, we're going to neutralize one mole of hydroxide. So to do this, what we need to first do is calculate the initial moles of hydroxide, how many moles we have initially present, then calculate how many moles of hydronium we add, and then we're going to subtract the moles of hydronium added from the moles of hydroxide that were initially present. Uh, that should give us the moles of hydroxide that remain. So for every mole of hydronium that we add, we neutralize a mole of hydroxide. So we subtract the moles of hydronium added from the initial moles of hydroxide. That gives us how many moles of hydroxide remain. We need to convert that to a concentration. So we'll divide the moles of hydroxide by uh, the total and then convert that to a pH. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Let me walk you through there. Okay. <clears throat> First thing I would do is calculate the moles of hydroxide initially present. I take the volume. Remember, we started with 20 milliliters of hydroxide. And the molarity is 0.2 molar. So here's my molarity. I multiply the volume times the molarity. And that gives me 0 0.00400 moles of hydroxide. That's how many moles of hydroxide we have initially present. Now we've got to figure out how many moles of hydroxide are neutralized. To do that, we add, our problem tells us that we add 10 milliliters of hydronium. So I take the 10 milliliters, convert that to liters, and multiply that times the molarity of my strong acid, and I get 0 0.00300 moles of hydronium added. So for every one mole of hydronium that we add, we lose or neutralize a mole of hydroxide. So to figure out the moles of hydroxide remaining, I take the moles of hydroxide that I started with, 
subtract the moles of hydronium that we added. And so we have remaining 0 0.001 moles of hydroxide. So that's how many remain after we've neutralized 0 0.0030 moles of hydronium. Now, since we're calculating a pH, ultimately, we need to get this back from moles to a concentration. So I take the moles of hydroxide that remain and divide it by the total volume. Remember that we started with 20 milliliters and we added 10 milliliters of our strong acid. So our total volume at this point in the titration is 30 milliliters. So we, of course, convert that to liters, divide the moles of hydroxide by the total volume, and we get the concentration of hydroxide, 0 0.033 three molar hydroxide. We can then convert that to concentration of hydronium by dividing Kw by the hydroxide concentration and then take the negative log of that to get the pH and we should see the pH is 12.52. Uh, so at that point in the titration the pH is 12.52 and you can see from what we had here we started with 13.30. Our pH is going down as we begin to neutralize some of our hydroxide. <clears throat> the third thing that we'd like to do is calculate the pH at the equivalence point. Now for a strong acid, strong base, uh, this calculation is a little different than what you'll see uh, for a weak acid and strong base, uh, but basically the definition of the equivalence point, as we mentioned before, is the point at which you've added just enough acid to neutralize all of the base that you had initially. So you've added an equivalent amount of acid. So all of your hydroxide that you started with has been neutralized because you've added an equivalent number of moles of, hydrox of hydronium. And so basically you have no more hydroxide remaining and you have no more hydronium because they've all neutralized each other. So basically what you have with a strong acid, strong base, is just a beaker full of water. Okay. Now, the pH of pure water is 7 because water will dissociate somewhat to form a little bit of hydronium and a little bit of hydroxide. Of course, uh, the concentration of hydronium in pure water is 1 times 10 to the minus 7, which would give you a pH of 7. So for any strong acid, strong base titration, at the equivalence point, the pH will be 7. So that's simple enough. And finally, <clears throat> we'd like to do a calculation of pH beyond the equivalence point. Uh, in this sample problem, it says calculate the pH of the solution at the following point uh, after the addition of 40 milliliters of nitric acid. Okay, so we're going to calculate the pH after we've added 40, a total of 40 milliliters of our strong acid. Okay. Remember from that little cartoon we looked at before that at the equivalence point, all of the acid has neutralized all of the base. So beyond the equivalence point, you're essentially just adding uh, acid to water. So your pH should be fairly acidic. Uh, to perform this calculation, we need to calculate the total moles of hydronium added. So when we've added 40 mils, what's the total moles of hydronium added? We're going to subtract the moles of hydroxide that were initially present because some of that hydronium has been neutralized by the hydroxide that was initially present. So once we get that uh, and we calculate the moles of hydronium remaining, we can then divide it by the total volume to get a concentration and then convert that to a pH. So let me walk you through this and show you how that calculation would be done. Okay. Now here, <clears throat> I've calculated the moles of hydroxide, just like I did uh, in the second part of the problem. Uh, my, I started with 20 milliliters of hydroxide, and the concentration was 0.2 molar. So I initially started with 0 0.004 moles of hydroxide. Now, at this point in the titration, I'm told that I add 40 milliliters of hydronium, or my strong acid. So I take that volume, the 40 milliliters, and multiply it times the, the concentration of the molarity of my strong acid. And so I've added 
a total of 0 0.0120 moles of hydronium. Okay. Now, remember, some of that hydronium got neutralized. How much? Well, the, however many moles of hydroxide you have, that's how many moles of hydronium were neutralized. So to figure out how many moles of hydronium are remaining, since the hydronium is in excess, we're past the equivalence point, I subtract the moles of hydroxide from the moles of hydronium added. You can see that here, 0 0.012 moles of hydronium minus the 0 0.004 moles of hydroxide that we had initially. And that tells me how many moles of hydronium remain. In this case, we would have 0 0.008 moles of hydronium remaining. Now to get a pH, we have to convert that to a concentration. So we divide the moles of hydronium by the total volume. We started with 20 mils. We added 40 mils of our uh, strong acid. So we have a total of 60 milliliters. Convert that to a concentration and we get 0.133 molar hydronium. We can then take the negative log of that to get the pH, and you see we have a very acidic pH, which we would expect, of 0.875. So that would be the pH after the addition of 40 milliliters of my strong acid. Okay. So that's how we would calculate the pH of a strong acid, strong base titration um, before we add or titrate in any strong acid after we've added some strong acid, but before we've reached the equivalence point, calculate the pH at the equivalence point, and then calculate the pH beyond the equivalence point. Now here is a sample problem that you should try. In this problem, uh, you're going to be titrating 40 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl, so strong acid, with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So this one's a little different. In this example, you're, you're starting with 40 milliliters of the strong acid in your flask, and you're titrating in the strong base. But the calculation should be pretty similar. So you're going to be asked to calculate the pH before the addition of any OH minus, after the addition of 30 milliliters of your strong base, calculate the pH at the equivalence point, and then calculate the pH beyond the equivalence point after we've added uh, 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So give that problem a try, see how you do.